Well, the details are flowing now, emerging about the Nashville Elementary School massacre. And we're getting new images of dramatic body cam footage showing Nashville police officers risking their lives to go toward the shooting. That's what heroes do. They took out that school shooter. Police say that deadly attack was calculated and planned, but they didn't reveal the answer to the biggest question, why, why, why? This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner, here with my co-hosts, Emily Campagno and Kaylee McEnany. Also joining us, board-certified radiologist and Fox News contributor, Dr. Nicole Sapphire. And here, for the very first time, Kevin O'Leary, chairman of O'Leary Ventures. And we look forward to getting to know him better this hour. Police identified the shooter as Audrey Hale, a 28-year-old former student at that school who recently began identifying as transgender. We're learning Hale was armed with two assault-style weapons and a handgun. They also found a detailed map of the school along with Hale's manifesto, although the FBI has yet to reveal the contents of that manifesto. Chilling images show Audrey Hale blasting through a side door of the school just after 10 a.m. local time yesterday morning, and then roaming through the hallways while opening fire. It lasted 14 minutes. It ended when two quick acting police officers took her out. These are new images from their body cam video showing the seconds leading up to the moment when police shot her. We see officers with guns drawn entering the school, checking each classroom before moving through the hallways and up the stairs to the second floor to Hale's location. Three students, young, eight and nine years old, had their lives cut short. Evelyn Dickhouse, her third grade classmate, William Kenny, and Haley Shrugs. Three staff members are also among the dead. Substitute teacher Cynthia Peake, head of school Catherine Kuntz, and the custodian Mike Hill, all beloved, all gone today. Kevin, this happened as breaking news during our hour yesterday. Uh, and immediately we saw one side pitch to politics. We want to know the stories of those people we lost before we even talk about anything else. It's a brutal situation. It's every parent's worth nightmare. It's, it's a, it's, it's hard to understand it, obviously, but I anticipate a new narrative is going to emerge on this case that's never started before. Very often, these um, individuals, clearly disturbed, put out information on social media days and hours before. We now have the technology to scour every server to use AI to identify these disturbing messages. The debate is going to occur about using this and where it infringes on personal privacy versus saving lives of children and individuals that are shot senselessly. This is a new narrative. It's not about gun, gun control. That will continue. But this narrative is within our abilities as a technology, and we are not using it. It may sound big brother-like. It may encroach on privacy. But if you could save one child's life with this, yeah. what parent in America wouldn't vote for this? And this child went through that educational system in that school, put out that information on social. It could have been identified, and that person could have been apprehended, helped, whatever. But the most important thing is hmm. two AR-15s and a handgun, that's got to be out there on social somewhere. Audrey was clearly disturbed. but we. Uh, you know, this really, this is the narrative that's going to emerge on this case, and it'll start today. I'm not the only person that feels this way. We can stop this using technology. Wow. Kaylee. You know, you mentioned the victim's name. Um, Evelyn Dickhouse, her sister, um, at a eulogy uh, for these victims, said, I don't want to be an only sibling. And it's heartbreaking. Hallie shrugs. We don't know their stories yet, but we know her father was the lead pastor. Um, a beautiful young children. I've seen their pictures. And we need to stand up for them. We need to fight for them. How do we change what's happening in this country? You know, I fear the poll that we showed yesterday from the Wall Street Journal. You just focused on it. Religion on decline. Community involvement on decline. Tolerance on decline has left a generation that is in such a dark place. Uh, and there's a lot of evil going around. And to CJ Pearson's point on your show, we need a revival in this country. That's mm -hmm. not something legislation can bring about. Um, but look, I wanna just briefly speak to every mother in America right now. The Democrats wanna talk about guns, Republicans bring up mental health. 
What can we as mothers do for our children? We can demand security at our schools. Go to your school board be meeting. We see how powerful that is. We've seen parents in Virginia make change to curriculums. Yes. Demand an armed guard at your kid's school. I walk by the Louis Vuitton store, there's an armed guard. <laughs> yeah. I walk by Tiffany's, there's an armed guard for those diamonds. What diamond is more precious than our children? Amen. No diamond. Demand that our children are protected. It's something that we can do today. We can do tomorrow. It is change and it needs to happen in this country. Well, and it's, it's one of those things that we don't have to wait for people <clears throat> that we know can't come to a bipartisan agreement on something to, yes. to take, to move forward on. It's immediate, as you say. Um, I'm hearing ideas. And I got to tell you, that would have been a beautiful thing yesterday, Emily, mm. but that's not what we heard. What we heard was a president who first went immediately to Jenny's ice cream, $12 for a little, a little not even a pint, like a little thing. He went there and then he went to guns, mm. the leader of our country. And what we needed, we needed our hearts to be focused and our prayers to be focused on Nashville and for these ideas to flow, like you're hearing from Kaylee and Kevin. Kevin. And, you know, no violence, no evil at this magnitude is ever predictable in the way that it unfolds and in the way that it unfolded yesterday. But unfortunately, the administration's response is all too predictable. It's a tone deaf, knee jerk political reaction. And amongst such evil displayed as we saw yesterday, heroes emerge and the incredible, the body cam footage that has been released of officers Engelbert and Colazzo, the consummate professionalism that they exhibited. I'm just a layperson, but I can identify a hero when I see one. Their training emerged. It was so clear, especially, you know, as we saw other players coming into this video, it was incredibly difficult to watch. It was graphic and raw and yeah. visceral as those officers went in there and ran toward the shooting to protect mm -hmm. those children whose lives are more precious than anything on this earth. Um, it was quite humbling to see, and I pray that and advocate for all schools to have not only those officers, but trained officers, active shooting response, tactical response, that process even of information when you, when you enter that building, when you enter that scene, training kicks in on all of these different scenarios. Too many for me to know as a layperson, but what I do know is we entrust that safety to those officers and they showed up yesterday and they got the job done. And this, another hero as well is Averiana, the, the friend of the shooter who, you know, when you see her response after she was contacted by the shooter and, and she articulated suicidal ideation, she did not articulate at that point um, a mass violence at her hand. And Arviana said, you have so much more life to live. I pray God keeps and covers you. And then she called the police. And I, I, at her young age as well, she did the right thing. Um, I wish there were more resources in place for her at that moment so she wasn't on hold for so long and so she didn't get a visit to her house so many hours later. Um, that's for perhaps a discussion at a separate time. But everyone there that acted that day, they showed up and God bless them. Well, the beauty of any situation, I always tell my young girls this, my teens that I live with, in every moment there are going to be heroes. Mm -hmm. There will be, God will bless us with angels. Um, I wish that there had been more in Uvalde, Texas, yeah. but we learned a lot. We learned about the value of courage and how that is as big a part of who we are as a nation as anything else. And so that really played out yesterday, the courage of those officers. And we have them up on our big wall now, um, if we wanna show, I know uh, Emily just mentioned Rex Engelbert and Michael Collat, so we can show them. Dr. Sapphire, your thoughts today? You know, whenever there is a tragedy, there will always be heroes that arise, and it is wonderful that we can look to them and hope that they inspire more people to be like them. We need more than this. But one of the detrimental things that played out in Nashville is essentially a microcosm of what we're seeing on a, a more national level. You have talking heads who are demanding gun control, yet when it comes to the ability to actually save lives, they fail. The shooter's mother, for decades, it's been reported that she has been calling for gun reform on her Facebook page. But when it came to her daughter or her son or whatever you want to call her, she was not able to identify the monster growing within and not able to identify the signs. We as a community have a responsibility. As parents, we have a responsibility to see those that are struggling. Yes, mental illness is an issue amongst our youth and others, but so is gun violence. And since 2020, gun violence and gun deaths are the leading cause of death in our children. And despite what the bumbling ice cream eating president says, it's not due to automatic rifles, it's due to handguns. If we can't protect our children from gun violence, then what are we doing on this earth? There is more to be done, but just calling for gun reform and banning automatic rifles, that's not going to move the mark. 
I mean, I heard it from Congressman Stewart of Utah, a Republican, and I'm hearing it from Democrats too. They, they passed that bipartisan legislation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that happened not long ago. Um, they are working together on this, but it puts a whole lot of pressure on those negotiations and conversations when the president starts off with ice cream and then tries to fight their battle for them and is an eloquent and bad timing and just a horrible choke joke.